I am, I'm really honored to be with you this morning, and I'm really sorry that I wasn't able to meet you all in person. Um, if you'd like to tweet about my talk, I'm Rupika Rizm on Twitter, my first and last name. And my talk uh, is called The Race for Digitality, Connectivity as Diasporic Identity. And now I'm thinking I may have been a little too cute with the title and the multiple entendres that it contains. So the race for digitality is a nod to the, the seeming explosion of interest in digital media, digital humanities, and digital studies that we see in, in, in academia, um, in tenure track and all tech employment ads in the US and maybe in Canada as well. So everyone seems to be racing towards this digital future. And the title is also a tongue-in-cheek gesture towards the race for Africa of the late 18th and early 19th centuries when European empires uh, were scrambling to bring 90% of the African continent under European control. So moves to embrace and co-opt the digital can have some of this, shall we say, colonial flavor, um, particularly in the academy uh, where the next big thing inevitably comes up against the anxieties of a disastrous employment landscape. But when we look at the tenure track job ads, at least this year and last year, uh, the digital jobs aren't flourishing. The market seems as dismal as ever this year. And the predominant trend is that requests for digital skills generally appear to be secondary and not primary. So that is to say that domain knowledge is not sacrificed to digital humanities skill and rather that disciplinary knowledge is subtended by the digital. So that's where I want to begin, um, at the junction of disciplinary knowledge and technical know-how, and at the tensions uh, of the digital humanities that emerge for work in African diaspora studies. So if we were to do the digital uh, and to do it well, uh, we need to approach it through the lenses of our particular area. Uh, so in light of this, my slightly precious title the race for digitality, is also a bid to ask where discourses of race, uh, whether critical race theory or black radical thought or womanism, intersectional feminism, reside in relation to the digital. Um, that's the question I'm, I'm really talking about today and not promising any answers. Um, but what will follow is partly theoretical engagement, uh, partly discussion of praxis, um, as I propose that engagement with the digital humanities particularly for those of us who work on the African diaspora, can produce new theoretical ways of thinking about race and diaspora. In many ways, the attention that digital humanities has earned uh, is reminiscent of the culture wars of the U.S. Academy in the late 80s and uh, 1990s, particularly over the relationship between literature and theory. So if you recall or have heard the stories, Shakespeare was jettisoned for Saussure, Defoe for Derrida. Uh, as cultural critic Roger Kimball writes in his book, Tenured Radicals, humanities education was being supplanted by ideological posturing, pop culture, and hermetic word games. Um, critical, uh, critics of the digital humanities have made analogous charges that digital humanities reduces literature to data, or that distant reading is uh, destroying close reading. So for example, Adam Kirsch uh, in his uh, New Republic article uh, writes that the very idea of language as the basis of humane education, of even human identity, seems to give way to a post or pre-verbal discourse of pictures and objects. Digital humanities becomes another name for the obsequies of humanism. So that sounds a lot like some of the discourses that emerged uh, during the culture wars uh, over theory. Criticisms uh, from the outside of digital humanities are relatively easy to rebut uh, and to dismiss as misunderstanding the field. But it's the ones that come from within the digital humanities, or the well-articulated ones at least, uh, that give us pause. So those of us who work with issues of difference, may perceive the ways that many digital humanities projects privilege canonical writers and allied race, gender, disability, class, sexuality, etc. And without attention to such often unintended omissions, digital humanities risks 
replicating the vicissitudes of academia writ large. Of course, the African diaspora is one of these areas that's underrepresented in the digital humanities, though I know that a lot of us here are the ones who are working to change that. So when I use the phrase, the race for digitality, uh, I also wish to frame critiques of the digital humanities in the echoes of Barbara Christian's concerns in her essay, The Race for Theory. If we consider some of the debates in the digital humanities through Christian's work, uh, we not only have a better understanding of the critiques, uh, but also ways forward. So Christian writes uh, with concern for the growing importance of theory in the academy in the late 80s, uh, and it's strikingly relevant to anxieties of the digital humanities. So she writes, for example, the new philosophers eager to understand a world that is today fast escaping their political control have redefined literature so that the distinctions implied by the term have been blurred. They have changed critical language to suit their own purposes as philosophers, and they have reinvented the meaning of theory. We could find any of Christian's charges in the internal critiques of the digital humanities. Her new philosophers are our digital humanists. Um, her altered literary critical language is our methodologies. Her article betrays concern for a landscape of literary studies fundamentally changed as theory becomes a commodity that determines appointment, tenure, and, uh, and promotion. And we're not really there with the digital humanities yet, um, but it's gaining currency. And because of the centrality of, of theory, Christian laments that some of our most daring and potentially radical critics, so black women, third world critics, have been coerced to adopt a language of theory um, and to speaking a language and defining their discussion in terms alien or opposed to their needs uh, and orientations. So for those of us doing work in digital humanities African diaspora studies, this begs the question of uh, why are we engaging with technology for our work? You know, are we um, being co-opted uh, by it, by technology, or are we co-opting technology for emancipatory ends? Christian suggests that theories, uh, mechanical analyses of language, graphs, algebraic equations, have silenced many of us to the extent that some of us feel that we can no longer discuss our literature. There's certainly more extreme, given that theory is more entrenched in the academy than the digital humanities, Christian's ruminations may strike us as uncomfortably pertinent. So the question is how are discourses of the digital humanities affecting diaspora scholarship in positive and negative ways? And um, moreover, digital humanities is now in vogue, and it runs a risk of obscuring a longer history of work that is digital but is not called digital humanities. Um, so just as Christian suggests that people of color have always theorized, we might want to ask, how has African diaspora studies, if not always, but for a while, engaged with key ideas about digital studies. So I'm thinking about Afrofuturism here, like Alondra Nelson's work or Greg Tate's work, who since the 90s have been framing African diaspora, um, African diaspora culture through questions of technoculture. And also scholars like Lisa Nakamura, Wendy Chun, or Anna Everett, who've been asking difficult questions about race and the internet for years. Um, and by evoking a race for digitality, I gesture at Christian's concerns about academic hegemony to suggest that our engagement with the digital humanities should not cede to a master discourse. Rather, we change the master discourse by the work that we do. So how we do this is a question we should ask, along with what kind of new theories of the digital humanities are created by our work. So, you know, we must remember that uh, literature and culture have been vital, vital to the very survival of the African diaspora. So even 30 years after Christian, we recognize her, her understanding that people of color, feminists, radical um, critics don't find literature uh, as simply discourse, but nourishment for their people and ways to understand their lives better. So in light of such, a, such an idea, uh, the, the issue here is that we shouldn't be undertaking work uh, on diaspora studies for methodology's sake, but for the sake of the survivance of the African diaspora. So we find in Christian's essay wisdom for our work. 
For example, she believes that there needs to be a relationship between theory and praxis. While she finds theory a prescriptive way, uh, the idea that theory should be a prescriptive way to read uh, to be problematic, she believes that theories may arise from practice and from the specificities of practice. And in the, in specifically, she means the intersections of language, class, race, um, and gender and literature. And moreover, she suggests it must be a collective endeavor. So the more that we hold events like this one and situate our work in broader conversations with fellow scholars of the African diaspora, uh, we can collectively develop theory from praxis, from the archives we build, the oral histories we record, uh, and the geographies that we map. And, and I'm sympathetic that it's, it's so easy to be frustrated because our work has historically occupied the peripheries of the canon, or the peripheries of the digital humanities, and Christian raises a similar issue with theory, that African American writers have been doing theory for a long time, but post-structuralist theory conveniently ignores their contributions. She and other scholars of African American literature and cultures were expected to know theory, but theory wasn't expected to know them. Doing digital work takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of labor, um, and we do this work and sometimes find the digital humanities does not recognize us back. And, but we have to be careful to ensure that our own frustrations don't erase or write over the contributions that African diaspora studies is making to the digital humanities. And it, unless, it can, if we do that, all we end up doing is reaffirming the power of Western academic hegemony. So in the race for digitality, as in the race for theory, we face a fraught relationship to the structures of domination that inevitably shape the academy. As Christian uh, describes as their uh, ways, I just got distracted by the message, uh, describes as um, their ways, their terms, and their approaches, uh, we have to be careful to make sure that our attention isn't directed at the they, that our attention isn't dire is directed at uh, the people who are represented in, in the work we do. Because if we, if we don't, um, we really need to understand that, that um, doing the work we do is important to kind of countering the issues of hegemony in the academy that can lead knowledge production to be complicit with the denigration or even the destruction of that um, which is which is other. So really, this is a this is a, a race for empowerment through the work we do. And um, I just want to show a few projects that I really find um, to be impressive. Uh, let me just um, show you. I'll skip over around DH because I suspect that Alex, who's with you, will be talking about it himself, um, but the Digital Archaeological Archive of Comparative Slavery, which I'm about to show you. So the Digital Archaeological Archive of Comparative Slavery is a really uh, wonderful project that um, maps data and images from slavery uh, site excavations. That's a really impressive one. Uh, another one is the oldest project, I hope you can see this, the oldest uh, digital humanities project uh, from African American literature, which is a project on the history of black writing. Uh, these to me are, are two really important, important projects. I could actually go on at length about other projects as I did in the first draft of this talk, um, but I'll write it up in a blog post on my, on my homepage and um, I will, uh, and then I'll put the links up there. So uh, I just want to want to end by saying a little bit about um, the project that I'm working on, uh, which is a cultural atlas of uh, global global blackness. Um, it's not exactly a new project. I began kept conceptualizing it um, a couple years ago, but I've come back to work on it now. And uh, the project uh, is intended to to create a cultural atlas um, of blackness, of a concept. And it's inspired by work um, from the Electronic Cultural Atlas Initiative, which is trying to create a comprehensive historical world atlas um, with mapping images and texts. And so the difference here um, is that 
this is a, a map of a concept, um, a map of an identity rather than a map of cultural texts in a specific location. So I'm in the process of developing a data set that lists text, lo locations within the text, um, time, period, author, and tags that I can use to create a map of blackness around the world. Um, so far I've done this using Google Earth, but I'm in the process of figuring out um, the platform and trying to keep in mind the importance of accessibility of the platform as well. So um, I can just show you quickly what it looks like right now. Um, it looks like this. So I'm intentionally not showing you um, showing you the map of Africa just because I want to show that there's so many representations of blackness from other places around the world. And so each pin, if you click on it, uh, pops up and gives you um, the data about a text that has a representation um, of blackness um, in it. And I think this project uh, is an example of the way that, um, that the work can actually represent and perhaps even create um, diasporic affiliations um, that we get a kind of new uh, and interesting way of thinking about blackness when we see that it's represented in literary texts from all over the world and it really complicates uh, those questions. So because of, of time I do want to end here um, but I want to end on an optimistic note. Um, but before I am optimistic I do also want to say that I think we need to honor um, the struggles and challenges that we face in the work that we do, the issues of labor and resources and money um, that, that are prevent, prevent, uh, present struggles to what we do. However, I also want to propose that we can embrace the race for digitality, um, that it will ultimately enrich the theories and the practices um, of As African diaspora scholarship, and then in turn, I think, we have a lot to offer to the digital humanities as well. So I will end there. <laughs>